Well, this uh, gathering this evening is um, focused on getting organizational endorsements for uh, Move to Amend's We the People um, Amendment, HJR 48. So we're going to pay some particular attention to what um, you can do to um, entice individuals connected to various organizations in your community, um, whether that's, you define that as your municipality, your county, your state, um, geographically, um, in any subset of organizations within any of those geographic places. So uh, the agenda for this evening is a quick introduction to Move to Amend, uh, followed by why it is we think it's important to get organizational endorsements. Uh, what type of organizations should you consider approaching? Uh, how to do that? Uh, how to secure endorsements, particularly at this time and uh, what a time it is, right? So uh, I think we need to pay uh, special attention to the unique period that we're living in and uh, be mindful of uh, opportunities, but also challenges associated with that. Uh, additional asks uh, have to do with if uh, you are successful at um, getting individuals connected to organizations to consider endorsing, uh, what other kinds of asks related to endorsements, uh, very much related to endorsements, that um, you may want to consider, uh, depending on how interested they are, what kind of relationship you have with them uh, to uh, inquire. Uh, we'll go over a number of existing resources we have that's applicable to um, reaching out to organizations that hopefully will make your job easier. And then we can um, engage in some questions, discussion, dialogue, cussing, discussing, whatever the case may be. So uh, with that in mind, uh, let us uh, proceed. Introduction to Move to Men, just going to briefly go over the mission, uh, Move to Men's principles and values and our goals. As uh, you may know, those of you connected to Move to Amend, you know, we're an outfit that's been around since uh, 2009, uh, a few months before the Citizens United horrific Supreme Court decision in January 2010, a coalition we are of hundreds of organizations and hundreds of thousands of individuals who are committed collectively to social and individually to social and economic justice ending corporate rule and why have that uh, last clause highlighted? Because I think that has special meaning for the time we are living through at the moment, building a vibrant democracy that is genuinely accountable to the people, not corporate interests. Our principles and values are basically these. We are deeply committed to uh, anti-oppression and solidarity organizing. If uh, there was any time, and it's never, ever been a bad time to focus on anti-oppression, but certainly now uh, with uh, issues around police br brutality that is uh, and has been for quite a long time, particularly targeted to people of color. Uh, we need to uh, double down or triple down on uh, our commitment to believing that uh, if we uh, wish to achieve anything remotely resembling an authentic democracy, we have to uh, work at uh, acknowledging oppression in our society that goes way back up to the present time and uh, working with others and being in solidarity with uh, those individuals and those organizations to try to build uh, relationships with those uh, people and groups that are on the front line uh, um, struggling uh, to uh, combat injustice in all of its forms. And certainly one type of injustice is injustice um, uh, of corporate rule. Second, coalition and movement building. Um, this basically means, you know, any group that is at all successful, and uh, those of you who have been involved in any kind of organizing, know full well that uh, it always helps to have um, uh, behind you, next to you, in front of you, uh, allies from other organizations who are trying to build a movement uh, to connect issues in groups um, and that hopefully have a shared vision and uh, strategies. It doesn't mean that you have to agree on everything, coalitions in general are by definition uh, entities that come together for you know, a specific purpose or two or three, but not the whole slate of everything you're working on because that will probably not be that large of a coalition. There's always going to be disagreements. That sort of goes uh, hand in hand with just the nature 
of differences, uh, different experiences, uh, life experiences, goals, uh, and the like. But coalition building and uh, movement building is incredibly important. Uh, grassroots organizing. Here we mean, um, you know, a, a means just as coalition and movement building is a means to building power, so is grassroots organizing uh, from the bottom up. And uh, any, again, um, effort that is worth its salt really works at trying to start in the community you are in and developing uh, context with organizations that are working with, you know, average ordinary people uh, who are in your neighborhoods, um, connected to uh, organizations that are working to meet immediate needs, felt needs, uh, right uh, where you may be living. So it's extremely important to build in that way from uh, sort of the bottom up, that's what grassroots organizing is, coalition movement building is sort of at a peer level, you being an organization reaching out to other organizations and trying to build a movement that way. Uh, number four uh, principle value that's incredibly important is a dedication to political education. Um, you know, what's the history of how we are, where we are? Um, what's, what are the lessons that we can learn from past movements? What do we need to learn today about what's happening issue-wise, strategy-wise, um, in what's going on, the unique uh, period? And what do we need maybe to unlearn, not just to learn, but unlearn, that uh, represents sort of mythologies that uh, we were all embedded with? So it's important that we maintain an ongoing commitment to political education. And finally, political and economic independence. Move to Men has always been dedicated, believing that it is so very easy and history is replete in this country with uh, efforts that get off the ground that truly seem to be committed and working uh, in consort and authentically representing uh, people and communities, but end up either being co-opted or uh, divided and conquered. And one way to get over that is to be politically and economically independent. And so that's what we try to do. We don't get our funds from any corporation, government, big foundation, uh, big uh, union, uh, super rich. Um, we try to be accountable to people like you and those at the grassroots who are our base, who represent uh, this uh, move to men movement uh, as we try to reach out uh, broadly and deeply. So that's our principles and values, our goals. You know, you know these to pass the We the People Amendment, to make clear artificial entities uh, don't have constitutional rights and that money is not speech, uh, to build a multi-ethnic and intergenerational cross-class democracy movement. Again, that cuts across issues and uh, oppressions that truly is uh, trying to be broad and deep. And lastly, um, related, and they all are sort of connected together, to provoke discussion and organizing, to go even beyond the We the People Amendment uh, about how to make real the promise of democracy through constitutional renewal. And certainly what we're seeing on the streets uh, over the last week uh, is basically an intersectional uh, fusion of many different issues, many different people, many different strategies, uh, many different uh, efforts that uh, we want to be a part of. All right, so specifically related to the We the People Amendment, just to kind of be mindful of what it is we're trying to do and how we're doing it, our campaign strategies to build power, I mean, it comes down to it, let's be real. We either have to, in our society, bring change, have power, ultimately bottom line in one of two ways, you either have to have organized money or organized people. And if you don't have one, you sure as heck better have the other. And to organize people to build power, you need to have both, if you will, a, a uh, inside strategy and an outside strategy. And our political, if you will, inside strategy is to try to get our friends in Congress, both in the House and the Senate, to pass the We the People Amendment. And a stepping stone to that is to approach them directly uh, inside the political um, uh, hothouse and the political Disneyland, political, whatever you want to call uh, Washington, D.C., uh, it is. Uh, to get them uh, to um, sort of respond uh, to the people and not to their donors, uh, which is not always easy, but to get them in the House to co-sponsor the We the People Amendment, H.A.R. 48, of which we have 73 co-sponsors, and to get it introduced in the Senate as soon as possible. And by outside strategy, we're talking about sort of grassroots. So not inside the political um, uh, system, but outside, and the way to do that is ways that some of you have done that. 
and have been a part of, to build awareness, to build a movement, to build power. And we do that by getting our friends in municipal uh, communities, in city councils, town councils, um, and the like, village councils, to pass resolutions, um, to get ballot initiatives, uh, to get candidates running for office, to pledge to amend that if they're in uh, elected, they will work and do everything they can to introduce and or uh, uh, ratify if need be uh, the We the People Amendment. Uh, organizational endorsements is what it is this session, this webinar is tonight to get organizations to weigh in, to build that awareness, to show uh, those folks on the inside of the power structure that we have not only municipalities that support us and communities that support us by ballot initiatives and candidates who are supporting us. So you better watch your back if you haven't supported and candidate uh, against you has, but to get organizations to endorse, uh, to build that, uh, that movement. Uh, we also, as uh, ongoing, ongoing outside strategy is to connect issues and groups and by focusing on key constituencies that we think are important and historically have always been important in building uh, um, authentic democracy movements in this country. And those uh, constituencies in particular have been labor, people of faith or ethical convictions, young people, you know, those are the core community uh, groups. You know, those have been the core constituencies that we need to be particularly aware of. And finally, an outside strategy is to build our own internal organizational capacity to expand the number of affiliates, the what we're calling now uh, move to men advocates, individual people who take charge in their own communities to educate and advocate and organize for move to men, uh, to gain members, to sign our um, a motion to amend uh, petition, uh, to be involved in our caucuses, to strengthen those. And as you may know, we have caucuses, groupings of uh, volunteers and staff who are particularly focused on constituencies, again, that we think are key, uh, labor, uh, interfaith, education, um, uh, next generation, which is young people. And then, you know, we're trying to finance this thing um, to make it uh, hopefully somewhat uh, sustainable. So that's our strategy. Uh, and as you can see, organizational endorsements in terms of contributing to our outside strategy and building power to put pressure on our friends in Congress is a really important piece of it. So again, appreciate your participation in this uh, gathering this evening as a way to collectively build the power necessary to uh, push this We the People Amendment as a stepping stone to get to even broader and deeper uh, real authentic democracy. So why do we get organizational endorsements? Uh, and why is this important? Well, sort of what I've said before, couple of things. One is, you know, it's sort of a natural next step, is it not, to passing municipal or state uh, resolutions or initiatives. A lot of uh, our uh, affiliates, for example, tremendous work, tremendous work in going out. Many of you I know have been involved in getting those municipalities, your city council, county commissioners, uh, in some cases even state uh, level um, uh, legislators to pass resolutions or to go beyond. So that represents, does it not, sort of to people in Congress that these municipalities, local public officials are weighing in. So that's sort of a local municipal endorsement, if you will. That's what a resolution is. And a state, when a state legislature passes a, a resolution, that is it not sort of a state endorsement of the We the People Amendment. If you have been uh, so uh, uh, enthusiastic and energetic to be a part of trying to get something on a ballot in your community or state, well, is that not also an endorsement of the We the People Amendment, but that is more of a widely disseminated public endorsement by We the People, who have both at the front end signed petitions, but also then at the back end gone to the polls and voted to pass something in their community that has said money's not speech, corporations are not people, and we're calling on Congress to pass this We the People Amendment. That's a public endorsement. Uh, pledge to amend is a, also a complementary strategy. Um, if you think about it as well, these are candidates who are endorsing the We the People Amendment, saying that um, if they are elected, they will um, do what they can to move this uh, We the People um, Amendment along. So we think this is uh, a very complementary and legitimizing 
because we've had municipal uh, resolutions passed, because we've had state resolutions passed and initiatives passed and pledgers uh, out there who have a pledge to amend, to go and ask organizations is nothing really brand new. It's just sort of a stepping stone. Uh, differently, we're now coming to you as an organization, a, you know, a, a intergovernmental organization, a community organization, uh, whatever kind of organization, grassroots organization, uh, affiliated with a, uh, a statewide group, a national group, a labor group, uh, a church, whatever the group may be. It's just sort of a next step. A third reason why I get organizational endorsements is it's a really great excuse. It's a teachable movement. It's a, it's, a, it's a handle to go and approach an individual who's connected to that organization or the leadership or the membership to talk about this issue when you're asking them to pass a, a resolution, to, to cobble together their own resolutions. We've got some sample ones that we can uh, get to you, but to sort of hand that over and say, all right, you're sort of a template, but it's up to you. you know, we want you to put your fingerprint on this. Why do you think this is important? So it gives them an opportunity to think about what issues, what concerns, what projects, what activities, what concerns they have and frame it and connect it to ending corporate personhood and getting big money out of politics. So it's a tremendous way to put the onus to sort of pass John. the baton to them. To we have, do um, yep. We have the sauce. We have pasta. Oh. I'm hearing you, so if you can uh, mute yourself if you are speaking, that would be wonderful. Another meal in the refrigerator. Okay. Uh, so number four, uh, it's an opportunity to explore ways to collaborate. Sort of a different spin on a teachable moment. Right? It's a good way when you approach groups to say, you know, we're interested. We think the group, the issues, the concerns you work on really do intersect with what we're doing. Let's sort of figure out some ways to collaborate. This is one step. It's not the only one. We'd be interested in finding out sort of what you're doing that we might be able to endorse, to support, you know, a little uh, uh, exchange, uh, bartering, if you will, or, or uh, a back and forth to build relationship, to build trust, to build solidarity. And lastly, it strengthens our efforts to pass the We the People Amendment and uh, to organize for legitimate self-determination. When we go in and we meet with our uh, congressional representatives, we can bring with us uh, the number of people who have signed the motion to amend uh, from our congressional district, let's say, the number of uh, municipalities that have passed resolutions, the number of communities that have passed initiatives, the number of pledgers of people who are running for office who are um, committed to this, as well as the number of organizations. Uh, and those organizations, maybe some of those, are organizations that that public official relies on, leans on for support, whether it's monetary support, whether it's human support in terms of people going door to door, making phone calls, smiling and dialing, you know, to get there's people a, to turn out, whatever the case small, may be. A small box of sauce as well. Okay, whoever is speaking, please mute yourself. Uh, so... That's why we get organizational endorsements and why we think uh, that is so important. So what type of organization should you consider approaching? Well, there's labor groups, there's interfaith and ethical groups, you know, churches or groups that are eth uh, of ethical persuasion, humanists and the like, uh, youth organizations, educational groups, community organizations, basically look any other organization out there that you believe where you are that works on issues that intersect, that connect, that fuse, that uh, coagulate, whatever adjective you want to use, that in some way have some kind of relationship in basically the, the, the term is if they are not able to achieve what it is they're working on because of an impediment dealing with big money in elections or corporate power, then they are a candidate to approach because they obviously are not able to get to first base, let alone around the bases on doing what it is they're trying to accomplish. So basically, you know, think about these groups, labor, interfaith, uh, uh, young led groups, educational organizations, community groups, as well as basically any group that intersects. 
All right, so how does this work? How to secure endorsements? Again, particularly, especially at this time. Uh, well, three points here that I want to uh, address. One is the approach. What should be the approach that you take? Second, what's the process? What should be the, the methodology? So approach is sort of the overarching uh, way to think, way to kind of conceive. The process is sort of getting down and specifically uh, doing the, the steps. And then number three is a consideration uh, related to the type of organization you may be uh, approaching. And so we'll get to that. All right, so how to approach uh, groups. I think number one, first uh, and foremost at this point in time, we need to be very mindful of uh, the internal concerns of any of these organizations we're approaching. Uh, concerns can be, well, any, any one of these crises, right, that are out there, which seemingly, you know, expand by the week, if not by the day. Uh, the pandemic, the economic, uh, racial, police brutality, now potentially martial law, hopefully that is just uh, only a, a threat and will not come to be, unlike some of those other ones that are very real and ongoing and have been taking place for a long time. You know, a lot of organizations may be so focused on their internal members, their internal organization, uh, promoting or trying to work on the issues in this minefield and in this environment uh, where these crises are existing, that they just simply may not, you know, they just may not have the bandwidth, the mental, the emotional, uh, the time consideration. So we need to kind of keep that in mind as we approach. Second, before you ever reach out, think about, do some research. What are the groups that you are trying to approach? What are they working on? Uh, look for those, those kinds of issues, those projects, uh, things they've written, things they've spoken about, if you've heard them speak, uh, that in some way intersects, fuses, connects to what it is we're doing. Third, you know, overall, again, this is kind of overarching approach. You know, the goal here is Again, we're trying to build power. We're trying to build a movement. We're trying to amend the Constitution. We're trying to potentially even go beyond <laughs> that. This is not sort of a scattershot, one-time thing. Let's go in, do this, go on to something else. This is long-term. And to do that rightly, uh, appropriately, uh, humanely, is to seek to try to build and nurture relationships uh, to the extent that's humanly possible. And I mean, you know, we only have so much time. <laughs> There's so much going on in our own lives uh, and with all the things that we are reacting and resisting that, you know, you gotta balance. But to the extent you can, to keep in mind that we're not just seeking an end, an endorsement, but we're really trying to focus as much on the means, on the process. And, you know, as Gandhi said, the, the means are the ends in the making. Focusing on means is so very important on what we do and how we approach and, and how we deal with people. And you know, sometimes it'll work out, sometimes it won't right away, but it's still worthwhile doing to try to build that relationship. All right, so process. There's no way to, one way to do it. Um, my way, for what it's worth, is uh, I believe an initial contact should be by email, uh, particularly if it's someone that you may not know or know very well uh, if it's someone you know pretty well and they would, you know, question you, Greg, why are you emailing me? You always call me. Then at that point, and, you know, call them, of course. But in general, I like email, particularly if it's somebody you don't know, somebody who's been recommended. You know, you have a friend, somebody in your group maybe knows somebody in that particular community organization or labor union or a religious group. So, you know, you can in your email say, you know, uh, Joan or, or Bob recommended I reach out to, to you. I think it's important by email because my experience is if you try to reach people, you know, if you will, what do they say, a cold call and ask them about something, they're not going to, you know, what's their answer going to be generally? It's going to be, you know, either hang up, I don't have time, or, well, that sounds interesting, send me information. So at some point, they're going to have to take a look at information anyway. I think it's better to send something first, and in the course of that email, you acknowledge you may be very busy at this moment. I recognize that. 
I realize that I'm acknowledging that, but I, you know, want you to take a look at this and I'm going to try to reach out to you, you know, next Thursday. Uh, hopefully that works. And then next Thursday you call and see, and maybe it doesn't, maybe, you know, you don't get a response. You try again, but I just think first step, because you don't want to pester, you don't want to do too many communiques where the communication is going one way, you're reaching out to them, they haven't responded to you. I like email. Uh, you make the connections between the work, their work, the current crises, whatever that may be, any one or ones of them, and move to men. So if, for example, uh, if it's labor, well, how does, um, you know, corporate rule and money and elections hurt working people? There's plenty. And with uh, the pandemic and with the bailout of, uh, relatively speaking, uh, corporations and the super rich, rather than working people, well, that's sort of a natural, uh, in your face, uh, a connection. If it's a religious or ethical, uh, I think connecting to, to basic inherent values, the values that we talk about that Move to Men represents, and the values of most, most religious and ethical. It's right, it's just, it's humane, um, it's sustainable uh, uh, environmentally. Uh, giving people a greater voice is, is giving dignity and worth to human beings um, and the like. So trying to, to find that kind of connection. And plus, many of these religious and ethical groups do have social action, arms or components to what they do. Find out in your research what that uh, social action group is doing what issues they work on and try to connect that way. And those links that are um, listed there are links to the per, um, uh, respective caucuses uh, of Move to Amend. And there you will find resources that give particular ways of reaching out, specific ways of reaching out to labor and interfaith, sort of uh, tips and talking points and the like. If it's a youth related organization, well, connect to the need for fundamental change and connect to the existential crisis we haven't even really spoken about in that laundry list previously mentioned, that being of the environment. Young people, I mean, we all are increasingly concerned, but uh, disproportionately, uh, not to be stereotypical, but in general, younger people are, uh, you know, even more concerned uh, about the environment and of the future and are seeking and believing that what has been promoted and uh, called for and worked on up to this point uh, by existing uh, politicians and even nonprofit organizations have been woefully inadequate. So finding ways to connect uh, uh, calls for fundamental change, well, that's right in our wheelhouse, is it not? Uh, so that should not uh, be uh, awfully difficult. And if it's a community racial justice group, connecting to budget priorities. Why is so much money at a community level going to policing uh, and not to meeting immediate needs? Uh, yeah, on not just main street, but side streets and back streets in housing and social services and the like. Uh, prisons, uh, development, you know, again, you know, at the, at the municipal level, most municipalities have two budgets, an operating budget and a capital budget. And different, those different budgets uh, fund different things in a community. And so doing a little bit of study of each of those budgets can see where your municipality is putting their priorities. The capital budget is where sort of those big ticket items of big development is going, you know, infrastructure or putting up some, you know, god awful new, uh, you know, super duper uh, high end residential condos that maybe aren't needed and that maybe by putting up it's displacing low and moderate income housing. So, you know, making those connections and seeing if, well, you know, maybe we have found that the developers are also campaign contributors to the mayor and council. So figuring out ways to make uh, those uh, kind of connections. All right, and you know, in the email, you know, again, I think asking uh, if this is a good time to bring this up. And I think if you ask straight up, you are acknowledging um, their um, maybe sense that they've got a lot of balls in the air at once. And they may see that this is a natural connection. And part of what you're trying to do in communicating by email is initially is to try to make those natural connections. Um, but, you know, only to a certain extent to see, to, to bring up, is this in fact a good time to talk about this? So that's the first step. Second, again, no one way to do it. This is mine. Take it for what it's worth. Follow up with the phone call. If in your email you say you're going to call next Tuesday, then make sure next Tuesday you call. And uh, based on, you know, assuming you get through, if you don't, uh, 
sometimes when I call and I get the uh, answering machine or before it clicks the answering machine, I don't leave a message. I want to try, you know, at least to see if I can get that person. So I'll, I'll make a call three or four times and not leave a message hoping that that person picks up. Now, if, it, if after three or four times they don't, you know, it'd be that, that day on the Tuesday, then I will call and leave a message. Um, now, if you eventually, hopefully, you get a response, if it's a good time, if somebody says, yeah, I looked at the material and you've had a good conversation with them, yeah, I'm sort of interested in sort of the next step, then of course, that's when you take the next step, which is to send the endorsement form and or sample resolution and links. And here, I just want to make a distinction. Move to Mend has a form, we call it an endorsement form, that's just pretty cut and dry. That uh, if people are busy, groups are, you know, again, they got a thousand things going on at once. We have a form that they can just basically fill out that says, yes, we endorse the We the People Amendment. Here's the name of, you know, our organization. Here's a contact person. Here's our email and website and, you know, little two sentence description of what we do, period. That's it. And if that's all the bandwidth, the energy, the time they have for, we'll take it. But what we really want and would try uh, to ask for, I believe, is the resolution. Because as previously mentioned, it's, you know, whereas uh, this, whereas that, it gives groups an opportunity to frame the issue of why they want to pass the We the People Amendment from their perspective. It takes more brain power, it takes more time, it may take more consideration by members, by maybe the, the leadership, uh, the board uh, to decide because they'll have to agree on all the language, um, what, whereas is they want to include, but it really is worth it because it helps people get a better depth of understanding. Uh, so a good time, if they say, yeah, I'm interested, great, I'm willing to send the endorsement form, a sample resolution, as well as some of the links of other information that we'll get to in the resource section. But if it's a good time, you can also offer yourself uh, to uh, either a person or a couple of people uh, to answer any questions, to be part of a, you know, a, a conference call, or to the group itself. Uh, maybe it's the, the membership, uh, or I should say the coordinating committee, or whatever the leadership uh, group may be that wants to hear more about this. They may not be familiar with Move to Amend or they've heard about other groups that are doing with this or, you know, I've heard about Article 5 Convention. Are you for that? I mean, there may be questions and they're, they're mixing us up with End Citizens United. I mean, there's a whole host of things out there that people don't sometimes thoroughly understand because they're not focused on this as we are. So offer yourself up if it's a good time. If it's not a good time and they say, you know, hey, I looked at the information it's kind of of interest, but you know, there's a lot going on right now. Uh, I can't sort of commit to doing action. Okay, you know, when can I get back to you? Can it be in a, a probably not a week, but a month or two? But in the meantime, here are some things you can do to help them remember you, to help them maybe with some information to round out their perspective on issues they're working on and to help them gain greater support by what you as an individual or you as an affiliate might offer to them. So these are some examples. Forwarding information. You may find, for example, that there's a great article that, ta that talks about, I don't know, you know, looking at the labor issue, how the, the third, you know, the, the CARES Act really did not benefit working people as much as corporate entities. So here's a really great article, I'm gonna send it to this labor person. Maybe they already knew about it, but the mere fact you're sending it to it, sending this to them may expand their awareness, number one, but it also is giving them an indication that, hey, you're, you're interested in them and you're, you went out of your way to send something to them. A second is to attend an organizational sponsored action. So they're you know, doing something now, people are starting to come out if you feel that that's something you can do, uh, by all means, do it, come out, show yourself. Or if it's, you know, they're asking for people to write or call, do that. That's sort of the last thing. 
if there's a statement that they put together and they're asking for organizational sign-ons, consider doing that, or various calls to action, consider doing that. So that's showing your support of solidarity. That third thing, attending informational webinars, meetings, conferences, many groups now that were going to have conferences or gatherings, annual conferences, in fact, have had to postpone or convert those into virtual. And some of these organizations that we're going to be charging a fee now are sort of opening them up, at least part of them. Well, if you find those kinds of opportunities uh, for that organization, maybe think of joining. They see you, you have an opportunity maybe to ask a question. That's an opportunity in questioning to maybe draw in, to sort of tease the issue that they are working on or addressing and how that connects with corporate rule and money uh, in elections. And lastly there, number four, sharing of organizational information and action. If they have, you know, it's, it's not sort of preceding that last point is, you know, they're, they're, they put together a statement or they're calling for an action. Well, maybe that's something if you feel is appropriate that you're willing to put on, if you have a Facebook page, you're willing to do that. If you want to send out uh, as an email blast, you'd be willing to do that if it connects to, uh, you know, move to amend in some kind of direct way. And you can frame it in that way in the text. So don't just, you know, take exactly what they say and maybe you can forward it, but preface it uh, in a blast with how you feel people who receive it should respond to this request for action. So there's all of those ways that if it's not a good time, you can still make yourself available to them to show your support, but also your keeping in their mind that you're still here and you definitely are going to check back. All right, consideration. And this has to do with, depending on the type of organization you are approaching, whether or not it is an independent group, all unto itself, if you will, or if it's a chapter or an affiliate of a larger group, if it's chapter or affiliate of a state group or of a federal group uh, versus just one that exists totally on its own, it's not formally connected, they are not accountable or dependent upon in any way another organization above them or below them, depending on how you want to look at it. If you think that the local organization is at the apex and so the national group is actually all the way at the bottom, depending on which way you want to turn that pyramid. Uh, but, and why this is important is because sometimes uh, national organizations have a rule in which they basically say that state organizations, if it's a national group, we and only we at the national level can endorse national campaigns or legislation. We will give you as a state chapter or affiliate the power to endorse state legislation or take action on state measures, but not national and maybe even local. And if you're a local group affiliate of a national group, you can't take a position on a federal piece of legislation or even a state piece of legislation. You can only focus in your domain at the local level. So if that's the case, then you know, many local groups will say, well, you know, you're asking me to endorse the We the People Amendment, which we can't do. So in that case, you want to tailor, specifically kind of te uh, tweak and tease the resolution uh, to say, that we are calling, we, you know, we, we support this in concept and we are calling you the national fill in the blank, whatever the group is. If it's the local Sierra Club, we're calling on the national Sierra Club to endorse the We the People Amendment. So that's a way around, an end around that. And that just hit, recently happened um, when uh, one of our affiliates, uh, Lawrence Abbott, connected to the East Bay Move to Amend, very involved in a labor group there, their um, a labor organization, sort of a AFL-CIO affiliate, could not take the position, only national AFL-CIO, uh, their protocol, their charter says can only take a position on this. So their local uh, you know, uh, uh, federation said, okay, we're calling on the national AFL-CIO to weigh in on this and to support. So that's just something to consider when you're approaching. If it's a local group that's not connected to an affiliate, well, go for it. All right, additional asks, uh, sign the motion to amend. Um, you know, why not? You know, it's, it's something you can ask them to do. Uh, request other members uh, to sign the motion. 
if they're willing to serve on a caucus, if appropriate, so if it's a labor group or if it's a, 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 an organization, you know, a religious organization, see if any of their members might be willing to be on uh, one of our affiliate or one of our caucuses. Uh, if they are uh, a part of, say, a labor group, uh, maybe not only if they so, you know, if they endorse as a local affiliate, say it's a, I don't know, United Auto Workers, there may be other United Auto Worker um, unions in their community or in their county. So when we say vertical outreach, we're, we're talking about vertically up and down, would you be willing, UAW number 604, to approach the other three UAW locals in your community and say, hey, we passed this, would you be willing to do the same? Or if not, you know, at least ask them who are the key people that uh, should be approached and can I use your name? But if they're willing to approach, even better. So that's vertical outreach. Horizontal outreach is to ask that you, you know, if it's a, uh, a labor council, um, to ask other, I mean, there's a lot of different examples here, but to ask sort of peer organizations to endorse. So for example, if it's a an individual church, uh, many individual churches or ministers are part of ministerial alliances um, or an interfaith group made up of representatives of different individual religious congregations. Uh, same with labor, right? An individual union may be part of the local AFL-CIO. So would you be willing horizontally then, you as a representative and you having at your local organization passed uh, the We the People a resolution uh, and the like, would you be willing to go to your you know, horizontal peer organization and ask them to the ministerial alliance, to the AFL-CIO, to the Interfaith Council, to whatever the case may be and ask them to endorse? Okay, resources very quickly. We have an organizational endorsement form previously mentioned and that, uh, you know, following those of you who registered for this call, I will send these out. You don't have to try to copy this down now. Uh, that's the link to the form. A model resolution. Uh, there's a couple of them out there. It's some tailored to labor, some to community or um, some to interfaith. I don't know if we have one particularly for community, but we definitely do for interfaith. And that's the link to um, um, uh, various a good template for any organization. There's a link to organizational endorsements. So that's something you may want to print out. There's hundreds or include in your email. So all of these would be uh, particularly the next couple I'm going to mention. This one, the link to organizational endorsements, the link to municipal resolutions and initiatives. Those two in particular, the organizational endorsements and municipal resolutions and initiatives would be good to include in that initial email you send out because it adds legitimacy. Look at all these other organizations, even if they are not, you know, a, a religious, if you're reaching out to a religious group or union, if you're reaching out to, there's all kinds of organizations that have endorsed this. Look at all these communities that have passed resolutions. Look at all of the ballot initiatives that have passed uh, by, uh, uh, by voters across the country. And then there's the link to the We the People Amendment, uh, the text and the co-sponsors, and the link to the pledge to amenders. Again, maybe in their community, uh, there are a number of people running for office who think that they may be endorsing already, who have already pledged. I just follow, I end by just basically uh, with a couple of slides here. Uh, this one is just uh, a reminder of drinking water hollows out stone, not through force, but through persistence. And sometimes that's what it takes. If you get a no the first time, now's not a good time, don't give up uh, because, you know, uh, people are busy. People's, again, particularly right now, extremely busy. A no doesn't mean a permanent no. It just sometimes means a no at this moment. Until and unless they say permanently, I'm not interested, gently, kindly, but persuasively, try to go back to them. And uh, at some point, uh, you'll get a yes. It's hard to find an enemy who has outposts in your head. One of my favorite quotes of all. And this basically speaks to the reality in our society that, um, you know, we have all been conditioned to believe what's possible, what's doable, what, uh, uh, how capable we are as individuals. If we don't have PhDs in 
in organizing or in political science or in economics or in sociology, anthropology or in social change or in social work. Well, there's no way we can work with people. There's no way we can eff ever effectively um, uh, work at bringing about any kind of change. That's nonsense. We all have PhDs, do we not, in what it's like to live in our society at this unique time. And so we need to use the knowledge we have and recognize that uh, we've got to get rid of those outposts that have been planted into our heads. What's going on today is not inevitable. It's not irreversible. It's been deliberate and intentional. And what has been done can be undone. And part of what this effort in trying to get organizational endorsements is to add to the breadth, the depth, uh, the widening number of supporters for We the People Amendment and beyond. So nature never gives up, neither should we. All right, questions. Let me sort of get rid of this and get back, if I can, to ending this. And take questions. So um, trying to screen sharing. Let's stop share. Here we go. All right, so if people are interested in um, questioning, commenting, um, challenging, whatever the case may be, then the best way to do it is I'll take a stack. If you just want to say your name followed by stack, I'll take maybe three or four uh, names. Anyone with a question or comment? A question, my name is Bill. Bill, okay, so I'll have Bill. Who else? I'm Benita. Benita? Yeah. Anybody else? And you may be, um, if you remembered to, uh, or you didn't remember, to mute yourself, you may have to unmute if you want to get on stack. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. this is Doug. Doug? All right. It's got yeah, Doug. Yeah. One or two others. Joe? One more. That's all right. We'll go with those four. Bill. My, a question. We have dis you have discussed a lot the arranging of endorsements or formal support. Talk briefly about how to publicize that endorsement so it has more effect than just on you and the endorsement receiving entity. Yeah. Well, that's a very good question. You know, I don't know. Where, where are you from, if I may ask? I live in Portland, in Oregon. Portland, great. Um, the reason I bring it up, the last sure. time I was worked with this kind of thing, yeah. we attempted to get our whole state to endorse uh, a 28th Amendment. Right. And uh, uh, with the purpose of informing our Oregon congressional delegation get us a 20 minute, a, 20, a 28th amendment that accomplishes two major pillars. And that was four years ago, I suppose. And right. it passed. So we don't have anybody else in Congress to talk with. We have to go back to them now. Uh, the endorsement has already been delivered to them a long time ago. Right, right, right. Well, to publicize, I mean, if you uh, either each time a resolution is gained, or after you have secured several, you know, that can be publicized both internally within whatever um, group. I don't know if you are connected to the affiliate there in Portland, um, but, you know, each time an endorsement comes in, at the very least, you can uh, place something on your webpage, you can put something on the uh, Move to Amend. Um, uh, website on the each now state has its own page. Uh, you can post it there. Uh, you can uh, let others in your community, if you are part of any kind of uh, grouping in social media, um, you know, part of a, a network, a coalition, let them know uh, about it. You could, for what it's worth, um, post it. You can let your uh, public official, federal, congressional person know about it. They may have um, a social media account, either Facebook page 
or a Twitter, you can let them know on Twitter that um, whether they have already endorsed or not, that uh, there is this endorsement um, by this new group, particularly if they're a group that you think and you know that uh, they um, um, support and that has supported them in other ways. Again, money, time, energy, whatever the case may be. So those well, are a couple of ways. As a clarification, specifically, if uh, the city council of Tigard does endorse the move to amend the, the, the amendment, who do they tell? Well, if it's a municipality like that, then usually the, the sample template resolution we have for that, if it's a political jurisdiction, uh, calls on them to send copies to their federal and state uh, relevant people. You could do the same actually uh, with your organizational. You could have uh, either that organization or again, depending on their energy, you yourself could send a copy of it, either hard copy or email to all your federal officials and the appropriate state officials as well. Thank you. Yep. Very good. Uh, Benita. Yes, hi. I uh, shared- And where are you from, if I may ask? I am in Sarasota, Florida, ground zero for climate problems and a lot of the political issues of the world. Sure. I, right here south of Tampa. Uh, I am personally involved in quite a few organizations, activist organizations, many of which have missions which overlap one another. Uh, there are not enough days in the month to deal with all of them. And now that we're doing meetings on Zoom, I sometimes have five or six a day overlapping one another <laughs> since I'm not spending money on fossil fuel burning. I put in the chat uh, contact information and have already forwarded to several people at their request a list that I compiled of these activist organizations in alphabetical order. And of the 285, which is constantly growing, I would say about 163 of those are primarily involved with climate. I do the uh, web page or the social media for the citizens climate lobby, for example. And a lot of the climate groups do not do so-called endorsements of other groups and or candidates. But the strategy that is employed there is to get the, those candidates to endorse those activist groups. In other words, CCL, which is nonpartisan, is not going to endorse somebody running for a particular office. But if that person running for the office endorses CCL or Sierra Club or some of these other organizations, then we both win. So in order to kind of keep reinventing the wheel, it's been kind of an effort of mine, a personal effort to uh, promote some kind of coordination between the groups. And from uh, my multiple Zoom meetings, which have been about 100 in the last two months, I've gathered information where hopefully the list that I have can kind of uh, streamline some of your efforts there. So my contact information is in the chat box for anybody who wants to get in touch with me via messaging from those organizations. Um, you know, I do Facebook messaging. I've also got personal email. I don't need any more. But uh, I'm, I'm glad to share what I have. I will say that Sarasota is a very active place. Uh, the pandemic has had a lot of senior people inside until this past week with a lot of the uh, protests that are going on around the country over the police brutality. So uh, there's always, uh, there's always a march and there's always a, an, a cause and there are only 30 days, 31 days in the month and only five days, six, five to seven days that we can do that during the week. Right. But uh, we try to uh, combine the efforts. A lot of the times if it's a climate strike, those people that are on the climate related organizations will be there. But literally all of them have something to do with move to, the, to amend. We have a lady here who's uh, what 85 or something and made mm -hmm. national news for doing a walk to Tallahassee. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, you may have heard of Rana Bazani. But anyway, this is the kind of thing that happens here. So just That's great. To, uh, to offer that, and I'm glad to share this information, and thank you for bringing everybody together. Well, and thank you, and uh, to the extent that there are organizations out there, I mean, you've mentioned some, some that uh, simply don't endorse uh, other campaigns. That's fine. I mean, there's groups that have all kinds of internal um, um, 
sort of limitations and the like. But those that don't, if this is something you think is appropriate, again, following this call, uh, we will be sending out. I see I was not able while presenting to follow the chat, but uh, there was some questions about uh, trying to get um, copies of the slides, which definitely we will send out a follow-up email with uh, the link to the slide program, as well as um, um, uh, included in that is a link to uh, all of those uh, other you, places Ted. on the Mutamen website. And so, your anyway. contact information would be also useful too, Greg. Yeah, you that's on the last side with, know. yep, Greg at Mutamend. So it's on there, but if you want to harass me beforehand, feel free to do so. Greg, <laughs> Greg at mutumend.org. All right. Okay, very good. Next Thank is, you, uh, is Doug. Uh, hi, I was hoping you would, uh, this is Doug from Columbia, Maryland, near Baltimore. Uh, and I am involved with Get Money Out. And uh, I was hoping you'd talk a little bit more about uh, Move to Amend's efforts in terms of of approaching incumbent and challenging uh, candidates in the House and Senate. We, we are particularly interested in Senate candidates since, you know, while HJR 48 and, and the competing lesser bill are already uh, afoot in the House, the Senate really hasn't uh, approached the issue of an amendment at all. And so we are particularly interested in uh, getting uh, Move to Amend uh, together with us on, on getting the word out and, and getting getting uh, Senate candidates to to uh, address this issue. And uh, so I'm hoping you talk a little bit about that. Well, it's not directly a part of, uh, of uh, the call, but I will say that um, um, there's no question trying to get this introduced in the Senate where it has not been yet is uh, certainly a call. It's a tall order um, because senators, of course, represent entire states and entire states are not gerrymandered like uh, uh, many of our congressional districts are, which is terrible in some respects. But sometimes it's helpful in that in safe districts, uh, people think I've got nothing to lose. I'll endorse this. Um, but entire states, sometimes uh, senators who need that big money to uh, wage under the current rules, uh, so they believe anyway, uh, are, have been hesitant to take this up informally, uh, become a sponsor or co-sponsor. So it is a challenge, but on top of that or beneath that is of course all the chaos going on in DC around these uh, respective pandemics. And the word we have gotten from um, uh, aides and, and uh, others who work in the Senate, in fact, the House as well, is they, they're not really focusing on, on this very much right now. So how can we build power? You know, what are some other ways to do that in this interim period? Well, one way is to get organizations to endorse so that the next time we do come back to those senators, you know, the, the message is a lot more convincing when we approach any public official if the second time we approach them, we have in hand more people who have signed a, a petition, more communities who have passed a resolution, more communities that have passed initiatives, more organizations that have endorsed, more people who have pledged. So if we can't do that sort of outside strategy right now because of what we're talking about, then let's put some energy to the extent that it's effective inside and try to get support and try to build power that way so that in the next month or so or two, whenever this thing subsides to some extent, it'll never go back nor should it go back to normal. Um, we will be in a much stronger position uh, to approach uh, those in the Senate. Um, so, you know, our strategy right now is not real active, quite frankly, Doug, um, uh, on the Senate side, uh, because, you know, we've been told by AIDS, you're really not going to get very far. I mean, they're not even meeting in person. I, I would say one exception to that would be that where, if, if that's happening at all, it's happening with some representatives who are holding virtual town meetings. But I don't know if it's happening with any senators. But if they are, then, well, I do know one, our senator, I'm from Ohio, and 
I know Sherrod Brown did have a, uh, a something related to the COVID-19 and workers' rights, funding for workers. So he did have, I found out about it, like the afternoon of the morning it was held. So where your senator may have a virtual town meeting, that would be a place because that's a place that is accessible that you can without trying to figure out how to do an end run, you know, without being able to physically meet and people are chaos. But if they are already holding an event where you can get some attention for a period of time, go for it. So that'd be my one exception to the rule that I think is doable. Try to pay attention, try to follow, see if on their website, they are announcing or better sometimes their announcements of uh, at least Sherrod Brown, where I saw it, uh, of his virtual town hall was on his Twitter feed, not even on his on his uh, website. So that'd be the one exception. Uh, Joe, I think you were next. Yes, hi Greg. Uh, Joe from Rockledge, Florida, right down the street from where SpaceX NASA just launched. SpaceX. Congratulations about that. Yeah, yeah, for everybody. <laughs> it's, a, it's a positive thing, right? We need a, we need some positiveness. Um, so just looking at your website, just want a couple questions. Number one, new, I'm new to uh, move to amend. I'm looking at, I'm in Florida, obviously, and just looking at the, uh, the list of affiliates, advocates, working groups. I'm just making sure this is, this is current, uh, number one. And number two, any recommendation for organizing either, I'd rather be with a group or create a credit group. Um, uh, just trying to, if you have just a comment about, you know, what the affiliate advocate or a working group, if you can just mention any of those as far as what is ideal, what, uh, from what, from your experience around the country, does it really matter? Um, to get a feel for, and I don't want to reinvent the wheel. If, if we have a group, a local group that's already part of this, I'd like to join. And if not, I would consider, you know, maybe looking at you know, building something. So I just want to get your, your feedback about that. Yeah, well, uh, where again? What community do you live in? Yeah, I'm in I'm in Rock I'm in Brevard County. It's Rockledge, Florida. Rock Ridge, okay. Rock, yeah, Rockledge. It's uh, it's basically it's the it's the East Coast. Okay. Uh, Central Florida. Yeah. Um, and that's Brevard County. Yep. Yeah. All right, I will check um, to see who might be some compatriots okay, who'd be willing to. Good work with you because you're right you know it's always you know it's better and it's more fun and it's more successful yeah and if if you're able some people are you know they like to go it alone that's fine if you're willing to do that and you're already part of an organization great uh, if you're already sort of embedded in a group or a couple of groups i mean there are people like that right there are people who they're not necessarily strongly connected to any group but they like to keep their fingers in five or six different groups Wonderful. Right. You know, you're like a bee. You're, you're pollinating. Uh, so pollinate uh, potentially uh, this whole concept. But if you're willing to, to focus and hunker down and, and work with one or two others, I'd be glad to try to put you in touch. Um, or somebody with Move to Men I can share. We'll do some research, figure out where you are and who is close to you uh, and uh, connect uh, you with uh, others so that uh, you can create some mischief with, where you, with, uh, with others where you are. Perfect. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for being on. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry to keep you going here, but we'll go another up to 15 minutes if people are interested. If not, I uh, won't take it personally. Thanks so much for being on. But if you do have other questions, queries, concerns, I'll take another round of stack. So name followed by stack. And you may have to unmute yourself. I cannot believe I have answered everybody's questions. Leave it. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I'm looking here just quickly at the chat just to make sure there is nothing that someone has brought up can reach out to my info do you have this contact so genie oh i can reach out tomorrow oh okay um yep 
All right, so you may be in luck. Joe, uh, Jeannie, who's one of our interns in Florida, Pensacola area, I think we'll be uh, trying to connect with you. Um, all right, well, uh, oh, uh, Jan talks about student organizations. Uh, can you address student organizations? Well, obviously you are seeing quite a number of student organizations, uh, formal and informal, uh, who have been connected to everything from the um, environmental crisis, you know, the 50th anniversary of um, Earth Day was hard to believe. That was just almost last month, but a month and a half ago. And we saw globally groups uh, all across the world organize. And there's many organizations, uh, younger groups um, that are working on these issues around, um, uh, you know, in your communities, uh, Extinction Rebellion is, is uh, one uh, a number of other uh, groups you may want to reach out. Uh, what's the other, uh, what are the mental blocks? Somebody can help me. Starts Sunrise. with an S. Sunrise. Sunrise. <laughs> Sunrise, maybe in your community. Uh, may want to connect with them. There are a number of, uh, if there is a college or university in your midst, although they would not be necessarily meeting now, but college and university um, uh, have active student organizations. And um, that would be potentially come fall. And if they are together in any kind of way, virtual or semi quasi physical back on campus, depending on what's going on, and they want to reach out to, to them. I know that uh, there are many high school groups now that have um, come together um, around uh, opposition to gun violence. Um, well, you know, that's a natural. NRA has been uh, heavily involved, have they not? in uh, using First Amendment right uh, political speech to weigh in uh, in contributing or investing in political candidates, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, mm -hmm. Another potential uh, uh, youth group to reach out to. Um, so, um, you know, think about that. We do, have, we do have a Next Gen Caucus. And uh, if you're interested in maybe connecting with them, they could give you some ideas. Uh, Jenny. Yeah, um, teachers, uh, since a lot of classes are being hosted online and Zooming, um, having guest speakers or projects um, relating to different things or whatever, you know, like um, if you're looking at high school, social studies maybe, or I, I don't think they call it civics anymore, but um, that kind of thing. And at the college level, um, having um, you know, just guest speakers because it gets kind of dry if you're listening to the same thing all the time. So it's just an idea. Reach out to different professors to, to share in one of their classes and reaching out. Mm -hmm. You may also, um, Jan, want to just sort of monitor if you were on Facebook or Twitter, monitor uh, your, your Facebook uh, uh, account and page. If you have a friend, sometimes friends of friends are connected to uh, youth organizations. I mean, there's just so much activity right now around, um, you know, police brutality and uh, Black Lives Matters related um, uh, concerns and youth organizations are all kinds of, you know, newly created uh, youth groups that um, it, by just monitoring social media, you may, you know, discover names of groups that you weren't aware of. And uh, again, in doing research background, they may have their own Facebook page. So click on that Facebook page, find out what issues, concerns, events are taking place, attend or try to reach out. Or if they're holding, again, if, if one of those organizations, DSA, Democratic Socialists of America, another, you know, it, it's cross generational, but a lot of young people connected to that. And some of those organizations, Sunrise, I know, DSA, I know, do have regular local, and they're, you know, they have local chapters, locally based, do have um, uh, webinars and monthly meetings and gatherings and, and education. They all do, which is why we're so busy. And uh, yep. the climate reality has gone totally digital. In fact, Al Gore was on there personally, you know, we used to pay to go his, to his 
seminars that were three days at a time right. and it's all digital now and it's all free on zoom and it's just a matter of you know googling it up and finding out when they are and getting on the mailing list there's a lot of them look at my list <laughs> 163 climate organizations but yep. Yep. yeah you got greenpeace and green this and green that but and it was the fifth year anniversary of Laudato C this year, which meant a whole lot to some people. I did the Laudato C um, animators program, and uh, it coincided with the 50 year anniversary of Earth Day. So it brought on faith communities that were concerned about being conscious of our common home. Right. So uh, lots, great. Of, lots of free information out there, too few hours in the day. <laughs> And thanks to John who posted in chat, uh, Fight for Fridays. Yeah, that's a good group. Mm -hmm. Planned Parents, NEA, National Education Association. Um, we are in touch with um, a couple of national educational groups trying to get them to endorse the We the People Amendment. Uh, Moms Demand Action, Physicians, PSR, Physicians, mm -hmm. Social Responsibility. I mean, again, start with who you know. Um, you know, there's no one way, no one sort of sequence of organizations you start with who you know and people around you you know what's that uh thing the six degrees of separation uh well you want to start with one degree of separation who do you know in an organization and deal with everybody in that inner circle and then from there okay if you're part of a group who do they know that's connected uh to you know the members of your group then who do you know it, you know it's sort of the Going back, showing my age, that Tupperware notion of, you know, being involved in uh, spreading out, you know, uh, uh, who people know, and then reaching out to those organizations. Again, not just any organization, but those who you think that have a preponderance of uh, attention and interest in working on issues that intersect with uh, money and politics and corporate constitutional rights or corporate rule. Well, they all do, actually. They all do have an Well, they do. Some, though, more closely that than is. others more obvious, more instantly, more in your face, uh, more blatantly. Um, okay, well, I don't want to hold uh, people uh, just to hear me continue to ramble perpetually. So why don't we call it an evening? Uh, thank you ever so much uh, for uh, being a part of this. Again, feel free to reach out. Uh, the email will go out in the next uh, day or two with the link to the um, uh, webinar along and, and contained in there is the links to the various uh, documents mentioned that provide uh, a boatload of, of uh, resources that can help you form that initial email and the like. But uh, again, feel free to reach out uh, to me. My email is listed at the very end. I'm also putting it here in chat. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, consternations, um, whatever the case may be. So thank you again very much uh, for attending. Have a good evening, everyone. Take care.